Hello, everybody, and welcome. Thanks for joining us for our Lunch and Learn webinar series on the second Tuesday of the month at noon. We had some te technical difficulties last month, which prevented attendees from any entering the webinar. So we are repeating last month's topic with some additions and changes in case you viewed the recording on YouTube. We apologize for any inconvenience that it caused anybody. On behalf of today's sponsor, the Florida Green Building Coalition, or FGBC as we call it, I would like to thank you for joining us today. Florida Green Building Coalition is the leading certifier of high performance homes, both new and remodeled, multifamily complexes, high rises, commercial buildings, local governments and communities throughout Florida. FGBC has more than 2,500, 500, 25,500 certified projects at this time. What makes an FGBC certification so valuable is the rating system is based on climate specific criteria particular to Florida. My name is Jeanette Moore and I'm the chair of FGBC's Realty Appraiser Builder Outreach Committee. I am also the real estate broker of Green Florida Properties in St. Augustine, Florida and an instructor of the Green Designation course for the National Association of Realtors. Last month, we talked about the value of a green team and everyone working on the same page. Today's webinar is the benefits of a green home. Our goal is to help you understand how and why a green home benefits the occupants. Our guest speaker, Barry Vasileski, will engage and entertain you with questions during her talk and at the end, you will have an opportunity to ask any additional questions. Before we get started, we'd like to get an idea of those who are living in a green home, remodeling their home to be green, or planning on greening their home. So let's see. All right. Okay, do we have any results on the poll? Give it another minute and then we'll look at the answers we've got. Okay, can you show the results please? Oh, wow, great, 33% live in a green home, 11% live in a green certified home, 56% want to remodel their homes to be greener and healthier, and 11% don't know enough about green homes. This is great. So it looks like we've got a number of attendees who already are living in a green home or working or making their, green, their home greener. We'd like to hear from you about some of the benefits you have discovered. So please raise your hand if you would like to speak or add your comments in the chat box if you prefer. While we wait for your responses and hands, I'll start with the benefits I've noticed in my own home. My home is a mid-century concrete block home with double pane windows, which I have been remodeling green since 2016. I started by replacing my old HVAC with a variable speed 16 sear one and replaced the ductwork from the original fuel oil system that had been in the house. The first thing I noticed was my HVAC was a lot quieter. My electric bill dropped about $20 a month and I had a lot less dust on my furniture. That was my probably my most famous favorite part of it. The humidity level in my house fell from around 70% to 54%, so I didn't have to worry about mold anymore. The next year, I had a white metal roof installed and also added solar shades on my windows, and I saw my utility bills go down about 20% more. Two years, ago, I had a, <laughs> two years ago, I had a small number of high efficient solar panels, and a Tesla battery backup installed. With these improvements, I ended up paying $1.38 for my electric consumption in the year, in the entire year of 2020. 
I'm hoping to have my home FGB certified this year, which will support all the retrofit benefits when I decide to sell. Okay, let's see if anyone wants to share their experiences living or greening their homes. Let me see what we've got. Um, let me find the chat. So, uh, I don't know that I can see if somebody's raised their hands. Let's see. Um, okay, let's see. Annette, you've got Gerald Geis and Peggy Chris. Okay, um, if you'd open the mic on uh, either one of them first and let's hear what they have to say about living in their green homes. Who do we have on? Go ahead, Gerald. I, um, I'm Gerald Geis and my wife, Sue Geis. And we live in a, a Florida green, green home that we had built last year. We moved in in August and we're realizing uh, energy savings. The house is very well insulated. What impressed us was that they didn't use any particle board in the house. So the cabinets are all wood, all the plywood is all wood. My wife is very allergic to the, the uh, chemicals that are in the particle board. So uh, that was a big selling point for us. And having them close up all the ductwork as the house was being constructed meant that our ductwork was a lot cleaner once they uh, got everything hooked up and running. And they installed uh, the Bahia grass. So we're saving money on water. And we have the uh, low, low, wa low water toilets, which I was concerned about, to be honest, but they work beautifully. And you mentioned the quiet air conditioning. That's very true. And yes, less dust is a plus. All right. And what part of Florida are you in? We're in Palm Coast. Palm Coast. Wonderful. All right. Anything else you want to add? Um, we were very impressed with Florida Green and uh, would recommend them highly. Wonderful. Well, thank you for that. That's great. Thank you. Um, I see we've got, uh, let's see, Peggy said she didn't really mean to raise her hand. Okay. Um, can you, let's see, Dave Kudlow is on here. Um, Dave, do you, uh, would you like to uh, go ahead and say something? CJ, if you could unmute Dave. He's unmuted. Okay. Dave? Hey, Dave. Well, okay. He has put that he's really green. And I happen to know his house and he, he is very, very green. He built his house um, back in 2009, 2010, and recently, um, and did the, uh, uh, spray foam insulation in the attic. He's done solar panels. He's done Florida friendly landscaping. And he has uh, received, he just received earlier this year, um, the platinum certification from Florida Green Building Coalition, which is the highest certification that you can have on an existing or a new home. So he has a very, very uh, green home. I'm sorry he's not able to. Um, uh, hello, that, hello, hello, Dave. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Oh, oh hey, how about that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the 21st century. I can use a computer now. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome. Why Thank don't you, you tell us a little bit about living in your green home since you've been in there for a long time? You, you know, it, thank you, Jeanette. Um, it's been a journey. Um, it when we started looking at retirement plans, uh, we lived in our house in Hilton Head Island, South Carolina, a land of the rich and famous. We weren't rich and famous, but, but we knew some good architects up there. And every single one of them that we went to was unable to provide any information about energy saving or green homes. They're all into the zillion dollar wow style of homes 
Um, and I've seen some of the homes up there. They're monstrous mansions, and, and they're beautiful, but they're, they, they don't care about energy consumption or being green whatsoever. And that was distressing. So we started doing research, and we found out uh, about a gentleman named Dr. Joseph Listerbeck, and we read some of his online works, and it was just absolutely eye-opening. And we learned how to build a house green and, and why certain procedures should be done and others shouldn't be done. So we, we ended up spending two years engineering our own house. We had an issue um, with the builder and all the subs. They thought we were crazy. They just thought, oh, you can't do this. It's not right. Even professional paid engineers uh, that we had to pay um, to have the, the heating element certified in the house were off by a, a margin of 100% on what the, uh, the BT wow. requirements were for the house. So, you know, we had to fight those people. And, and finally, I got to the point where I, I told the, uh, the builder, I said, damn it, I'm writing the checks, do it my way. And it got done <laughs> my way. Um, and I wasn't pompous or anything about it, but I mean, I knew what I was doing and they didn't. They were just going off that this is how you build a house and you really don't know anything, David. And I'm going, okay, I'm writing the checks. So anyway, um, we love the house. Um, our, our walls are approximately 15 inches thick. Um, they're ICF constructed. And yes, we do have um, spray foam insulation. It's not on the roof on the roof though it's on the ceiling and that that was done after all the penetrations um were done for lighting and speakers and plumbing and anything you could imagine but it was sprayed directly on the ceiling uh there's no ductwork in the attic the ductwork is under the ceiling uh disguised in a soffit that runs the length of the house so that there's no heating or excess of heating or cooling of the ductwork it is absolutely um uh, and we oversized it uh, to one half inch water column um, a lot of the old style air conditioning people want to throw the air well in a in an airtight house like this you don't have to throw the air you just want to gently circulate it um uh it's it's a 2000 square foot house and the maximum output of the HVAC system is um, approximately, uh, it's two and a half tons, but we, it never runs at two and a half tons. It's like Jeanette's air conditioner. I'm familiar with hers. They're computer controlled um, inverter technology. We want our air conditioner in the summertime to run constantly, but only at the lowest setting. You can't hear it run, you can't feel it. It just moves the air and dries the air, um, which is what you want. And uh, it's been a fun experience. Um, we do have a white metal standing seam roof, which reflects uh, the majority of the radiant heat. Um, uh, the temperature in our attic, if you go up there um, uh, at any time during the day or night, summer, winter, is within one degree of the ambient outside air temperature. It is not hot in the attic. If it's 70 degrees outside uh, in your front lawn, it's 70, 71 degrees in the attic space. So we figured out, um, we figured the this is the way to go and we built it and uh, we're very happy here. Like Jeanette, we have an extremely low utility bill. Unfortunately, uh, um, you know, our, uh, our energy provider is, uh, well, they're just, they're not, they really don't like us guys with solar panels because I think we're interfering with their cash flow. Back to you, Jeanette. Well, thank you, David. And uh, one thing I do want to uh, bring up is when uh, Dave talks about the difficulties or the issues that he may, that he had in the beginning when they were designing the houses, he was doing this back in 2009, 2010. So uh, there's been a lot of progress since then, and we have a lot, uh, a much larger number of builders around that are, are able to understand um, 
green homes and the construction of it. And that also um, points to the fact of how important it is to have a green team when you are um, building your house. So um, I think we have uh, Bill Ketchman as well on the line. I don't know if he wants to um, uh, be unmuted to go ahead and tell us about his conversion or his uh, retrofit, Bill? Maybe not. Okay, all right. So that's, um, that's it for uh, anybody that wants to say anything, I think. Uh, let me just check chat. Um, okay, that seems to be it. So now I'd like to introduce our guest speaker, Mary Vasileski, who will be telling us more about the benefits of a green home. And she would definitely know, as she also lives in one. Mary is the Sustainable Development Coordinator, coordinator of Florida Green Construction in Palm Coast, a new home builder who achieves education level for every single home they build. She is a graduate of the University of Florida where she received her MDP in Sustainable Development Practice, a Certificate in Tropical Conservation and Development, and a Certificate in Environmental Education and Communication. After conducting her graduate research in the middle of in the Middle East, Mary decided to dedicate her career to improving her own communities in the US, now working with Florida Green Construction. So Mary, can you show and tell us more about the benefits of living in a green home? All right, thank you so much, Jeanette, for the introduction. And Jerry, thank you so much for logging in with Sue and talking about your certified green home. I just wanna also say, David, kudos for ICF. I live in an ICF home, and once you go ICF, <laughs> you can never go back. And same, I'm sure Jerry and Sue can say the same thing about an ICF home. Just the our values are incredible. Your energy bills are lower. But that being said, I'm going to stop fangirling over everyone, and I'll come back and <laughs> reel it back. But what a lot of people don't really know is that a certified green building one that includes the multiple facets of green features, not just a green feature. A certified green building is a high performance building. So what that means is a high performance building, you get high performance benefits. Now, what is inside a certified green home that makes it what it is? Well, it's a combination of stuff. Uh, first and foremost, you have healthy and durable materials. Like when Jerry was talking about uh, plywood, using materials that don't off-gas as much, low VOC paint, um, proper, uh, oh, I'm getting ahead of myself, but going back, then improved in ventilation. You want fresh air circulating to every room. When you have a certified green home, most likely it is a closed envelope where you don't have any room for uncontrolled energy exchanges between the outside, for example, between your trusses and your walls, or maybe certain windows that allow for airflow to go uncontrolled, energy leaks, that all is sealed. So you get Jeanette, better- are you still there? Hi, Bill. <laughs> anyway, um, so you get better ventilation because there you get good airflow. You don't have to worry about your air leaking in from looking out from your roof or your doors you go and you breathe fresh air in every room. And air that's air that's used is recycled back outside. So you don't have to worry that for the 30 years that you're in your life, living in your home for your life, that you're breathing the same air that you breathed in 20 years ago. So better insulation. So you don't wanna use insulation that off gases, harmful chemicals that lead to negative health outcomes. You wanna use insulation types that are not respiratory irritants. And that is also a part of the Florida Green Building Coalition code. What kind of materials are you using? What kind of insulation are you using to safeguard your energy? So now you're also using efficient technology and smart home features. So whether that's an AC unit that you can control from a phone, Energy Star appliances that you can, well, save you energy, water sense appliances that don't use as much water and 
I mean, it's kind of nice to not hear them because they're more quiet. And it's also super convenient when you can control it through an app, but um, maybe only millennials and younger will approve that. But I think there's some Gen X and boomers who like to control things through their phone and not get up to. You can raise your hands if you want. You don't have to admit it though today. But the final step is that you have accountability and third party certification. Someone once said, don't let anyone tell you you're being green without being certified first. What certification means is that you get peace of mind. You have independent inspectors going in at different stages of constructions in addition to your typical county or city state requirements, whatever that is where you live. You get people saying, okay, yeah, you are using the low E windows. Yeah, you did pass the blower uh, door test. Yeah, you know what? You are going to save 3000 a year on your energy bills. Here's this quantified through this national agency. And this is something that the Florida Green Building Coalition, one of the reasons I love working with them is that it's all encompassing. Now this certificate is a platinum certificate for the home that we're in, is very difficult to achieve, um, but not impossible, obviously, as you know, David has a platinum green home, so does Jerry, so do I, so is this one that we're standing in right here. So all this to say, Everything that goes inside of that green home gives you high performance home benefits. So first and foremost, health and well-being, comfort, which is not something you really think about in a house, but you want to be comfortable in your home. And you don't really, when you think of comfort, you think of like what kind of furniture, what kind of mattress, but comfort is more than that. And we'll get into that in a moment. Positive environmental impact. So your home can actually help reduce negative uh, environmental I guess, consequences. And finally, financial benefits. A lot of people feel those financial benefits when living in their high performance home. So what does that mean, health and well-being? So good health and well-being is extremely important. It's actually number three in the UN Sustainable Development Goals. But first and foremost, reduction of allergies and respiratory irritants. That's something we started to cover a little bit before between Jerry's example of the plywood and low VOC paint flooring. Um, then you have the minimization of mold potential. So how can you seal your house so that mold or maybe pests and termites are less likely to be able to come in and grow and destroy your home from the inside out? That being said, research shows that these features, along with other green indoor air quality features, lead to improved sleep quality. Now, if you're someone who's respiratorily challenged like me, um, sleeping with sinuses when you're allergic to mold and you're allergic to your own dog and your home isn't property but ventilated, it really impacts how optimistic you are when you wake up in the morning. Um, so, and that is, luckily that is also documented when people living in a certified green home with improved air quality have been shown to have better quality sleep. There's also research that suggests that you have higher cognitive performance. So for example, I mean, think about it this way. When you're not congested, when you don't have allergies, you don't have that brain fog, you're able to focus better and concentrate better. So when you think about it logically, it makes sense, but research also documented that. I believe the example that they, um, one of the articles I read said that workers had a 101% increase in cognitive performance in offices that were certified green or that were built with improved air quality. So that being said, all of that because you have lower VOCs, materials that off gas and improved ventilation that constantly brings in fresh air and takes out old air, um, odors and moisture, mold, stuff like that. Comfort. So even temperatures throughout the home. I remember in my home that I used to live in, my room was the coldest room in the house in the winter and the hottest room in the house in the summer. So we had this thing called, well, that I lovingly call thermostat wars, and I would always lose um, because, you know, one room versus the whole house. So having an even temperature throughout the home is something that's important for comfort, especially since a lot of us are still working from home or some of us really discovered that we like working from home and we don't know how far the pandemic is going to keep affecting us the way it is. So constantly when you're trying to, you know, have the whole side of the whole house be one temperature, it gets, it gets to you, especially when everyone's either studying from home, working from home, 
and just spending 90% of their time indoor inside their home. Quiet Energy Star appliances, energy efficient, water efficient appliances. That's something that we don't really think about when we're choosing our appliances and building, but you wanna have something that isn't like gonna distract you from being on a phone call. You wanna be able to walk by your laundry room feel like there's like your house is falling apart so and same we put in your dishwasher maybe before you go to bed you turn it on you don't want to really hear that from your master bedroom or one of the bedrooms you want that to be as quiet as it possibly can be according to today's technology then you also have reduced heat infiltration with energy efficient windows so the windows we use are low e windows so they don't let in as much uv light and heat transfer so for example we had someone walk into one of our homes that was just finished. Um, they're from Chicago and um, they have a house here. They touch the windowsill of one of the green ICF homes and they're like, oh, this isn't hot. And I'm just like, what do you mean it's not hot? They're like, well, in our other Florida house, it's really hot. The windowsill, like we wanted to, like while we were working remotely in Florida, we wanted to put our desk in front of the windowsill, but the desk and the window just kept getting extremely hot and so we were turning down the energy and it just wasn't working so we had to move out of that room and you know it's something that it's not really a big deal but when you're working from home and you want to sit across from the window and look out and you spend 90 again 90 percent of your time indoors you want access to that outside world and again that's just a comfort feature so outdoor sound suppression with proper insulation when it's done properly you drastically reduce how much sound you can that your house lets in. Again, good for sleeping, good if you want to sleep in on a Sunday morning, someone's mowing the lawn, or if you're trying to work from home, if you live in a big city, you know, you, you don't really want to hear all that sound and all that traffic. So, and natural lighting, you know, this home has plenty of natural light. When you walk into it, it even when the lights aren't on, you don't feel like you're in a dungeon. So natural lighting is huge when it comes to the comfort of living inside your house. Positive environmental impacts. You can't really talk about green building, certified green building without talking about the holistic benefits. So that also includes the impact on the environment. Environmental impacts of green building is that you have increased water conservation with the right appliances, with the right plumbing features and design of the plumbing system in general, you're not wasting as much water. With proper materials, you're reducing leaks and plumbing fixtures as well. Um, even your landscaping, your native environmentally friendly landscaping, especially for Florida, we're known for the green golf courses and the bright green grass that might not, this typically hard to maintain, especially with how hot it gets here. So when you use native and Florida friendly landscaping, you're increasing the chances of your plants thriving and not dying. And you can use things like drip line irrigation, where the water goes directly to the plant instead of going all the way in the air, potentially getting on your building, your car, and everywhere but the plant root with a typical sprinkler system or irrigation system. Finally, you have lower energy usage and reduced carbon dioxide emissions. When you use less energy, you reduce how much emissions are going into the atmosphere. Thus, you know, your building is helping do your part with uh, climate change and um, I guess global warming, but you're also using less toxic building materials. That's important because when you're reducing your, your personal exposure to toxic building materials, and when you use less toxic mater materials, you're reducing environmental exposure. So in the environmental system, everything is connected. So let's say something runs off into the water or into the air, someone's gonna breathe that air, eventually that water is gonna come back to us. So by using less toxic building materials, you're really safeguarding you, your community and your region by doing that. And finally, reduce construction waste. Someone was telling me yesterday about Florida that, what was it, the largest hill in Florida is the landfill um, because we're, we're pretty flat here. Um, but you know you do definitely want to reduce the amount of construction waste and building waste that your home produces. Financial benefits. So lower monthly utility bills, lower home maintenance costs. When you're not using materials, for example, something like 
you know, plywood, going back to that example, something that you don't constantly have to replace, um, a proper energy system, proper um, ventilation and insulation systems, things that are certified, meaning someone came in from a third party, in this case being FGBC, while construction was happening saying, yeah, this was done right, or this was done wrong, redo it. That means that you have a higher chance of your home being better built, built better, and lower maintenance costs for you, less likely that things are going to break. Um, now, of course, if you come in with a baseball bat and start ruining everything and destroying everything out of anger, there's nothing we can do about that. But um, I will tell you, you're less likely to destroy an ICF wall, uh, but that's for another conversation. Mortgage and insurance benefits. So programs through uh, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, they can actually, having a certified green builder, energy efficient features can increase your mortgage uh, qualifications. So you can either be approved for a higher amount um, because they know you're going to be able to make those monthly payments on your energy bills uh, with the savings on your energy bills. So insurance benefits, like for example, I have being in a green home, my insurance is very low um, with the wind mitigated roof, with proper safety features, increased secondary water resistance. So I get, when you know what credits to apply for, you get them. So it definitely helps with my with insurance benefits. Now you also have increased resale value with the third party qualifications. According to the National Appraiser Institute, a green home can sell for about 6% more, up to 6% more, just by having the certifications that you have on average. Certifications means that it's true, it's recorded somewhere, and it's not gonna get lost. So that being said, when you go and say, my home is different because it has this feature, this feature, this feature. It will save you money. It will help your, oh, it. Health outcome. So hence my home is worth more. Now, as codes are improving in the state of Florida, people are finally moving towards the green codes. And it's predicted in 2030 that perhaps FGBC codes will be adopted by the state of Florida. Your home that you build today with the green certifications has the highest chance of being able to compete with newer homes on the market in the future. Because again, you're building your home to a higher code, a higher standard. Now, growing demand for green homes as people become more aware of the benefits of being green, people are demanding them. You know, even with us, people are asking, like, do you have any homes that are already built that we don't have to build that we can move in? You know, my child has respiratory problems and we know that this is going to help. So a lot of people are demanding it as the benefits, the awareness of the benefits increase. So next up, I know that we promised you a slight tour of the home. Uh, and so I will give you guys a tour of our model home, our current model, the Maria in Palm Coast. And we'll go through it together. Um, I hope you don't see my lighting contraption that almost fell, but we're gonna we're gonna be very casual about this. So I, my apologies, or not. But this is an example of a certified green home. These are some of the certifications that this home has achieved. Now, a green home is not necessarily what it looks like on the interior with the design and the colors, that you can choose. A green home is about what's on the inside and how it's built, what the plans were, what appliances, what technology are you using, how did the architect design it, how did the builder do this? So we'll start with one of the most important places in the home, um, not that I'm biased or anything, the kitchen. So here, just this as an example, our hood takes air, odors all the way back to the outside. Now I know Florida code permits that you are able to circulate it into your attic. So when you're, when you go up to your attic, it smells like all the bacon, egg and cheese that you've cooked all year and the fish. This is also a good comfort feature because the open floor plan is incredibly popular right now. Now, let's say you made some food, chopped some onions, sauteed some onions and garlic. You don't want to be smelling that from your living room three hours later. You want that to go right outside as this hood does. Same when you think about your dishwasher. You put your dishes in your dishwasher, the open 
floor plan being as popular as it is, you don't want to constantly hear that to the loudest of the ability. Now you can still hear a dishwasher because it is still an appliance, but it's not going to be as loud. Now here we use boxes out of genuine like plywood boxes, wood cabinets. That way they're made out of high quality, durable materials. These appliances also are vented to the outside, your microwave and your oven, that way it doesn't smell like the food that you cook for another, you know, couple hours. So I'm gonna take you to see our air exchange unit. So here you can actually, this is a digital ventilation controller. And this, you can actually control the energy, the rate of energy exchange. So how much fresh air comes into your home per hour? Typically we do between 20 and 25 minutes, but that depends on your home. Typically best practice is at least seven fresh air exchanges per hour. Typically in our homes, that is actually in our garage, but we put it out here in display for education purposes. Now here we have a 16 sear um, carrier system, variable speed. So right now here you can hear it running. So I'm gonna stop talking for a second so you can hear how loud it is. This is it at its loudest. The benefit of this, the variable speed air handler, is that it doesn't blast the air as loudly as it nor as a typical AC system would. And then it, there's a continuous level of exchange and it slowly puts in the air from the outside into your home. And it maintains a more consistent temperature throughout. So if you set your home at 73 or 74, your home will most likely actually be at 73, 74. And because it stops providing air as soon as there's a temperature homeostasis, it saves you energy and then it automatically comes back on to maintain that temperature. So you don't have to worry about going and constantly playing with your thermostat. Now this right here is the size of the filter. It's a very thick filter. Here, I'll point, you can see an air duct that comes in from the outside of the home, bringing in the fresh air exchange which I'll show you where that's actually coming from in this home. So for a house with ceilings as high as they are, this is the system. Here you have the fresh air coming in from the soffits and the old air coming back out. So we have these places for exchange in different parts. Here, I'm not sure if you can see it, but there's some for the laundry room the machines, and the bathroom. Now, there are different ways of improving your ventilation, or I'm sorry, your insulation. One of the ways we do it, a little differently than the way Dave does it, but we did our open cell spray bulb on the ceiling. Open cell has a couple of benefits, which we'll talk about in a different video. Um, otherwise, we will be here all night because this is really an interesting topic. One of the reasons we, one of the good things about it being certified is that our entire ceiling is insulated. So not just the garage, not just the living area, but the ceiling is insulated for the whole home. That way, there's less likely, less chances of things coming in between your roof and your trusses, such as mold, moisture, wind and it's a completely sealed envelope up here. Here, another reason that we do this in the ceiling is that we do have our air ducts here. So by insulating our ceiling in the attic where the air ducts are, it prevents them from heating up and from carrying hotter air into the system, thus saving you energy money and also making the system, AC system work less hard.
Now, I hope you guys weren't holding your breath about that, about me not falling. So those who were sending good energy to me not falling, thank you very much. Your intentions have been heard by the universe because I'm still standing. So this is a sample of an ICF wall. There are plenty of ways to build green. ICF is one of them. It is a green material. But here you see a form that has two and a half inches of insulation from both sides. So that seals the barrier and it has an effective R value of 29, which is insanely high. <laughs> Here, the ICF wall, you come put it in these forms, you uh, assemble them, and then it's filled with poured concrete all the way through in a monolithic slab that's reinforced by number five steel rebar. Now this, again, does a lot for your energy savings. All right, we're going back into the house. The thing about the ICF wall as well is that it is structurally sound. It can also withstand hurricanes up to 200 miles per hour on impact. So here I'm going to take you into one of the bathrooms. We have low, uh, low flow toilets. This is me. Hello. Water sense features and appliances. And one of the things that I like is that when before we apply the tile is that we do have to put in a moisture barrier to prevent water from leaking into your walls. Now that is an excellent green feature because most of us shower every day or so we're told we should. Um, and you just don't want to have that risk of something happening with your shower. And with leaking, because we know how devastating water damage can be. Here you have spacious rooms. Lots of natural light, more water sense appliances, proper ventilation, both in the bathroom and in the water closet. Now, this isn't a green feature. This is just some people like windows in their bathroom. And again, green is not so much of the exterior aesthetics. Green is about the way the home is built from the inside. The home that really tries to benefit you and has you in mind. So unless anyone wants any specific part of the tour, I will now return to my booth. Thank you, Mary, for showing us the many, many of the benefits of a green home. Let me take a look at, I know there's a couple questions, so let's see what those questions are that you can help with. Uh, let's see. Okay, um, someone asked if um, the, uh, if you, is there's a bank that you work with that you find uh, easy to work with for the green mortgages? Uh, yeah, so one of the, now, a lot of this also has to do with the lender that you're working with yourself. So one of the banks that we've had great luck with the lenders uh, with the increasing mortgage qualifications is Center State. Now, they don't have a green program in general, but we've been able to send them the proposed HERS index and energy materials to them. And that has improved the mortgage qualifications for some of our clients. Um, there is another green bank, actually, that services Florida in Alabama, but I've heard great things about them as well. So a lot of it, there are certain lenders, and if you email me, I'd be happy to connect you guys. Um, one of the attendees um, mentioned First Green Bank, which uh, is a bank that I did business with and has is now Seacoast Bank. <clears throat> but I believe that they are still um, handling the green mortgages. So yeah, that's, that's another one. There are a couple of excellent, excellent lenders there that um, used to work there when it was first Green Bank that are still at Seacoast. So I definitely 
recommend. It's easier to increase your mortgage qualifications for an end loan than it is for a construction loan because they most likely have the programs. Um, with a construction loan, it's not impossible. It just requires more proof. Now, if anyone has any questions, I'll definitely share my experiences in a different chat or a different email, phone call, et cetera. And uh, as you can see on the screen, we've got uh, contact information for both Mary and myself, if you'd like to uh, contact us. Um, one of the attendees uh, in the audience said that um, the ICF walls are a great system for hurricane, um, for hurricane areas. So um, that's another good thing to note about it. Let me yeah. see if there's anything else that I haven't covered. Um, <clears throat> Someone had asked uh, if you know anything about um, uh, avoiding uh, use of a smart meter if they have frequency sensitivities. Um, do you have anything you can say on that or is that something they should talk to the utility company about? Yeah, I would talk to the utility company. I, what's the utility company that you guys, the person who asked the question? That's interesting. Um, I know that um, my meter was switched out to a smart meter in the beginning, but then once I got solar panels, it was, um, it's a totally different meter since I'm net metered, so it goes back and forth, but I'm sure that's still a smart meter. So, and I don't think I have any frequency sensitivity, so I can't really comment on that, but um, I'm with FPL, so that's who I would call. And I think we've mainly got, uh, on the East Coast, FPL, and uh, um, I don't know who it is on the West Coast, to be honest. Um, see if anybody's said anything, has responded. Um, well, Talgan, that might be a question, uh, Melody, for Bill. Bill might actually be able to, um, we can connect you to Bill Ketchman. Perhaps he can give uh, a more satisfying answer. <laughs> Um, here's uh, one person that also, um, let's see, actually um, from Peggy Christ, who is a uh, realtor in the um, Bradenton area, she says she uses Homebridge Mortgage because uh, not only are they aware of green, but they use the green appraisers. Oh, perfect. Yeah, uh, Homebridge has some good programs, some really good end loan programs. Um, and it's good when you have a bank that is automatically aware of green mortgages and green appraisers because someone coming in from the construction side, it, it is like pulling teeth. Luckily, we, FGBC, working with FGBC, I have all, all the documents I need when I provide a, con a contract to the bank. I have my green addendum that's filled out by 15 light years, the green certifying agents. Um, I have the National Appraiser Institute green guide and so that typically, and a letter from the National Appraiser Institute that says, if you are an appraiser who does not have the requisite knowledge of green building, you are not supposed to take this property to appraise. So it's a much more roundabout way than if your bank already has green appraisers. But I say this so that you know that nowadays, if a bank says, I'm sorry, I don't know of anything, you have actually resources to help you through that. So that's great news and thanks to FGBC, Jeanette and uh, Sandra and Amanis from the National Appraiser Institute, they were able to help me, our company, a lot of clients for us to get those green certifications to banks. Great. Um, Bill Ketchman replied that he has heard of uh, some problems and he said contact the utility company and they will come out and check it regarding the uh, frequency sensitivity. So that's a good, uh, a good response on that. Someone else has said, uh, which sounds very interesting, that they are building a dome home out of concrete. So I don't know if that's with uh, Fox Blocks or uh, what, but um, that does sound interesting. I would love to uh, learn more about that and possibly see, I hope they're going for a certification as well because it would be a great project. So let me see if there's anything else. Um, uh, 
Clay Electric uh, from Dave. Clay Electric Co-op has smart meters. However, you can opt out of that program if you're worried about electronic admissions and use a standard meter. So that's good to know, especially if you're in, um, in uh, Clay County. Um, let's see, the dome home, let's see, Melanie is the one, um, they're doing a dome home process and they're going to go ahead and film it. So we'll look forward to uh, hearing from you as you um, create your film, uh, Melanie, and, your, and the progress on your dome home. So that would be great. Okay. Um, oh, Mary, did you want to say something else? Uh, someone asked, I think it was Barbara, a question about bamboo resources. Oh, yes. Um, um, is actually a question for Jeanette. Uh, actually, I am. Uh, I have been researching bamboo suppliers, so I, <laughs> I can't answer that one. And there is a uh, company called Cali, C A L I, Cali Bamboo. And not only are they a bamboo supplier, but they have um, luxury vinyl tile, and they have um, uh, what um, I forgot what it's called. It's a wood veneer over a limestone base uh, or center. And all of their products, all of Cali Bamboo products, are um, count for points through the uh, U.S. Green Building uh, LEED certifications. Um, I don't know if uh, FGBC is going to be looking into that as well, but they do count for points um, for green. So they're definitely green. And that, that's how I got involved with them. So anything else you want to add to that one, Mary? No, no. That's, a, that's actually, we're looking into that too as well. Yeah, actually, I'm going to be bringing down some samples to you next week. <laughs> awesome. Um, okay, and uh, let's see. All right. Uh, okay, and uh, one of our attendees is hiring a landscape company to develop healthy use of the land over time, which we're going to go ahead and cover uh, landscaping in one of our future um, uh, webinars. So we will delve into that even further. And, and Melanie, you might want to look into the UF, for, if you're in Florida, the Florida Friendly Landscaping, because they have the specs already written out as well. And they, if you haven't already, you know, they might have some good tips for you or a good standard or guide for you and your landscape company to work with. So it's UF they Florida Friendly Landscaping. They actually have a um, an interactive database. So you can, uh, if you want to add small trees in a, um, or, or small bushes in a uh, shady area. You can put in the parameters and they will come up with um, Florida friendly uh, plants that will qualify for that. And also, um, let's see, Bill's also bringing up a very good fact to look for a Water Star certified uh, landscaper. And we're actually going to have um, one of our speakers will be from the St. John's River Water Management uh, District uh, talking about the Water Star. So that'll be one of our future presentations as well, future webinars. Um, let's see. And um, let's see. Bill says that his son used, wait a minute, there's a lot of people coming in right now. Uh, he used the bamboo flooring in their house and it's hard on the blades. Shoulder blades? Uh, oh, no, <laughs> probably the saw blades. Pro he probably installed it himself. So uh, let's see. Uh, and the dome home is in the Tallahassee area. So we will definitely um, keep in touch with Melanie on that one. So that looks like pretty much everything in the chat. And we're right on time uh, for our one hour webinar. So thank you again, Mary, for all the great information that you provide each time. And we look forward to joining you joining us again as we continue our building blocks of, green build, of the Green Building Series. And all of us here at Florida Green Building Coalition are delighted that you all chose to attend our Lunch and Learn webinar today and hope you're leaving with some valuable information. 
that will help you in the future. Please join us next for our next Lunch and Learn webinar on Tuesday, July 13th at 12 noon. And we'll send out um, flyers and let you know what that one's going to be about, um, hopefully within the next week. So thank you everyone for attending and we look forward to seeing you next time. Bye-bye. Uh, thank you. Ha, ha, ha.